This mini-movie is a mystery-slash-crime thriller where a top computer security specialist witnesses the death of her boyfriend and is pulled into a devious series of betrayals involving the theft of millions. Try guessing the Rotten Tomato score by the end. There will be spoilers, let's get started. The movie is about Abby Turner, a lead internet security systems designer for Custodes, a computer security systems company. One morning after her boyfriend, Josh Lawson, left her apartment, his car exploded as he turned on the ignition. Abby, who was up by that time, was startled by the explosion and looked out of the window. She ran out of her apartment and was shocked to see her boyfriend's car burning in flames. Still in grief, she decided to report back to the office and insisted on doing the client presentation for the security systems that she led to develop, for Secure. For Secure is a centralized online software security system for companies dealing with global foreign exchange transactions. After the presentation, her assistant informed her that two FBI agents, Kathy Anderson and Danny Wilcox, are in their office wanting to speak with her. The FBI agents revealed to Abby and her boss the true identity of Josh, her boyfriend. Apparently, Josh is a computer hacker, whose real name is Jared Leary. He was convicted of fraud and grand larceny. He operates by approaching single females in high-ranking bank positions to get access to what he needs to hack their computer system and steal money. The FBI agents believe that her boyfriend is doing the same to Abby. They think that whoever hired her boyfriend and caused his murder is out to get Abby too. The agents tried to seize Abby's laptop, but she refused and asked for a warrant. Abby's boss was troubled by everything and thought their company's security system was compromised. Abby went home, checked her laptop, and found that it had been hacked by her boyfriend. She also found a bank account under her name with $10 million transferred into it after her boyfriend was murdered. One night, Abby discovers that her boyfriend also used her laptop to communicate with another hacker with the codename Spider. Finding Jared online, Spider tried to collect payment. Abby pretends to be Jared but later reveals she is not Jared and that he is dead. Abby tried to get more information, but Spider logged out. The following day, Abby met with her boss to inform him that her laptop had been hacked and that an account had been created under her name, to frame her, with $10 million in it. She asked her boss to give her time to get to the bottom of things. Abby continued to get Spider to meet with her until Spider agreed to meet at a club. A man showed up, pretended to be Spider, and tried to steal Abby's laptop at gunpoint until a car ran him over. Abby reported the incident to the FBI agents, and after some questioning, she was allowed to go home. Agent Kathy instructed Agent Danny to get more information about Spider. As Abby was getting into her apartment after being dropped off by FBI agents, she was startled by someone who suddenly appeared behind her. It was Spider. The lady server at the club was Spider but didn't introduce herself because of the man who approached Abby. At her apartment, Spider revealed that Jared hired her to create a program that will move money from a master account to several dummy accounts but will disappear as soon as the money has been transferred. After learning that Abby does not have the money to pay her, Spider left and didn't want anything to do with Abby. Abby searched Custody's mainframe and found the virus created to steal the money. She went to her boss's house informed him of the virus and the missing $300 million from their clients' accounts. Meantime, the lab test results from the DNA taken from the car bomb came out, and it showed the DNA was of a certain Simon Davis, and not of, Jared's. This complicates things because it means it was not Jared who died in the car bomb. Agent Danny immediately reported the findings to his partner, Agent Kathy. While Abby was in her boss's house, the two agents came looking for her because she was not in her apartment. Her boss lied, and said he has not seen Abby. Abby left her boss's house through the back door. 
she went home and packed her things. While packing, she felt someone was in her apartment. Her boyfriend came from behind and gagged her to prevent her from screaming. He explained everything to Abby. He said someone who knew his past blackmailed him, hooked him up with Spider, ordered him to send the virus into Custody's mainframe, or he will be sent back to prison. He refused, but the blackmailer threatened to kill Abby if he didn't cooperate. The morning he left her apartment, the person who contracted him for the job, Simon Davis, was supposed to bring him to a meeting place, but before they got into the car, Jared said he forgot something, so Simon got the keys and turned on the ignition. Jared wanted to go back to the apartment and tell Abby everything and ask her to run away with him. But when the bomb exploded, he fled and disappeared to protect Abby. The next day while Abby was walking near Spider's apartment, she was blocked by Spider. She asked Abby why FBI agents were staking out her apartment. Abby said it must be after she spoke to them about the club incident. Abby and Spider went to a cafe to talk about finding the missing $300 million. In the meantime, Agent Danny spoke with Agent Kathy about his theory that Abby was being set up. He explained why he thinks so and suggested that they see Abby to get more information instead of arresting her. He asked Agent Kathy to meet him at Abby's apartment, but she said she was late for a meeting and that she will catch up with him. At Abby's apartment, Agent Danny saw the door open. He entered slowly, calling out to Abby with an aimed gun, but he was shot at point-blank by an unidentified person. Soon after, the FBI released pictures of Abby and Jared that appeared on the local news. Spider saw the news while they were in the cafe, so they immediately left and went to the motel where Jared was hiding. In the motel, the three worked to devise a program to recover the 300 million. The final step for the program to work is through Custody's mainframe, and they have less than an hour to complete the job. Abby decided to access Custody's mainframe, but before leaving, she called Agent Kathy. Spider bypassed Custody's security system, and they were able to access the mainframe. However, to their surprise, Spider was unable to crack the security code. Suddenly, Agent Kathy appeared. Spider was surprised, but Abby said she called Agent Kathy for backup. However, Abby too was unable to crack the code. The delay infuriated Agent Kathy. She took out her gun and threatened Abby. Her reaction puzzled Abby and Spider because they were supposed to be on the same side. Agent Kathy revealed her master plan. She admitted to using Jared and his criminal record to get into Custodes but pressed for time, Agent Kathy aimed the gun at Spider and ordered Abby to crack the code and then transfer the money to an account number. While Abby was transferring the money, her boyfriend suddenly appeared and jumped on Agent Kathy. They went on a scuffle until Abby's boss came and shot Agent Kathy dead. Abby was surprised to see her boss, but he said he immediately came over when he saw someone used his access code to log into their system. Abby asked her boss what to do with the 300 million. He said to transfer it to an escrow account until the feds give them instructions. At Abby's apartment, everything seemed all right. When Abby asked Spider her real name, she said she is known as Spider even by Abby's boss. Abby was surprised that Spider knew Abby's boss. Spider said her boss spoke in one of the lectures at her school. Abby remembered Jared telling her that his blackmailer was the one who hooked him up with Spider. Putting one and one together, Abby decided to check the money. It is missing. Abby went to her boss's house and found him packing. When asked where he was going, her boss said after what happened he wanted to take two days off. Abby asked for a confession from her boss. When her boss continued to deny, Abby revealed what she gathered, about Agent Kathy investigating her boss, both of them getting into a deal, and her boss transferring the 10 million into her account to frame her. Her boss tells Abby she has no evidence against him. Abby responded by saying, he also has nothing. 
her boss immediately checked his account and found the money missing. This enraged him so he took out his gun. Abby says, he has a gun. It was FBI agent's signal to burst in. Abby's boss was arrested. The movie ended with Spider, Jared, and Abby introducing themselves formally. Spider's real name is Sienna. That's the end of our mini-movie. Can you guess the movie rating? We'll give you a moment. Web of Lies was released in 2009 and received a 46% by the audience and Mini Movies rates it 7 out of 10 doggy treats. If you enjoyed this mini movie, you can support the movie by watching Web of Lies or following us on social media.